Now, the wife of detained Nigerian journalist Omoyele Sawara is calling on the UN to help free her husband. Sawara has been in the custody of Nigeria's security forces since August after being charged with treason for organizing a protest against the government. He was rearrested earlier this month despite two court orders granting him bail. Sawara's case has drawn attention to the issue of press freedom in Nigeria. The country was listed on the committee to project project uh, to protect rather journalists global Im uh, impunity index this year my colleague zane ash has spoke with sawara's wife of earlier take a listen what is really scary about this case is the fact that the nigerian government has shown a high level of lawlessness and a real disregard for the rule of law so um there are two outstanding court orders um, within Nigeria from two separate judges um, where they have actually released CLA on bail um, and the Nigerian government is currently um, ignoring those court orders and still continue to maintain him. So again, he has been kept in isolation for 139 days. So the court orders have been completely ignored. Now, for people who are watching this around the world who know nothing or very little about Nigeria, what do you think your husband's case tells them about the Nigerian justice system and about freedom of expression in that country? I think um, Yale's case is a perfect example of just the fact that the civic space in Nigeria is closing. He is one of many journalists, many activists who are currently um, being deten detained. He's currently one of many who've been named prisoners of conscience, both religious re leaders, journalists, um, as well as politicians. So the Nigerian government actually recently introduced two new bills. One is a social media bill, um, and the second one is um, a, a, a hate speech bill where um, it's actually punishable by death. So these are bills that will make it possible for the Nigerian government to punish dissent legally within Nigeria. Incredible, and it, it does say a lot about rule of law in that country and about freedom of expression. But just going forward in terms of really putting pressure on the Nigerian government to release your husband. Um, we know that in the U.S., Senator Cory Booker, Senator Bob Menendez have both spoken out. But beyond just tweeting about this case, beyond just sort of issuing statements, what more can the U.S. do in practical terms, and I guess other countries around the world, to make sure that Yele comes home? First of all, I want to say that I'm truly grateful to Menendez and Booker and um, Chuck Schumer, all the different senators who have spoken out as well as representatives. Um, our, our local congressman, um, Representative Josh Gottheimer, just recently nominated Yele for the Tom Lantos Human Rights um, uh, Freedoms Project to be a prisoner of conscience. Um, there are a lot of activity to continue to drive awareness and hopefully start the dialogue to help Yelly to be released. But I would say one voice that um, is really critical in terms of putting pressure and raising awareness on what's happening to my husband is the UN. So my hope is that the UN is able to speak up and help bring my husband home safely to me and our children. In the months following Omoyele Sawara's arrest, the staff of his U.S.-based site Sahara Reporters say their Nigerian bank account was frozen without notice. They told the committee to protect journalists that this happened in October, hurting their operations.